Okay, heat rises, it's true. But really what heat does is heat moves to the place where there's the greatest temperature difference. If you have good insulation and a, a good air barrier up there, the heat still has to go out of your house somehow. And the next place it's going to choose is down through into your basement or your crawl space. So that's why we're coming down here to check this out. Looks to be an unconditioned basement. Floors are insulated. Um, notice that this, this brown paper, this is called a craft paper. And most bats of fiberglass come with that. It's backwards though. If this is an unconditioned space, this should be the other way around. The paper should always be towards the conditioned space. So in this case, it should be the other way around. If you're up in the attic, the paper should be down facing. So now we're looking at the crawl space. This is a fairly typical crawl space, but if you notice, it's only crawl space really for one section of the house. The rest, there's not enough space for you to get in. So effectively, it's not a crawl space because you can't crawl in it. That's actually some really bad construction for this house because the floors are just about sitting on the ground and there's not much you can do. There's no insulation you could put in there. There's really not a lot. But hopefully, your home, if it has a crawl space and most, most homes that have crawl spaces, it is very typical that you'll have an accessible area throughout your whole home. Whether your basement is conditioned or unconditioned, you may decide you want to insulate those walls. If it's conditioned, you really should. It's really, really going to be a huge benefit. If it's unconditioned, you get some benefits, not as much. And that's because the unconditioned basement with insulated walls will get less cold than if the walls are uninsulated. If it's less cold in here, that means the temperature difference between here and your house is less, which means there's less movement of heat. Now, if you're going to insulate the walls, you need to consider where's your frost line. Where we are here, the frost line is at about two foot deep. We already know from measuring this house that this foundation is two foot above grade. So from the top of the foundation to about here is already above grade. So going to the frost line brings us to about four foot. Four foot from the top of that concrete block is our frost line. Insulating below that isn't nearly as important because that never gets colder than about 55 degrees here. Now, if you're up in the north, your frost line's down to eight foot, so you'd be insulating from the top all the way to the bottom. Two inches is not ideal. It's only an R10. Generally, you want to aim for whatever the walls are insulated at, which is R13 probably in most houses. So it's not far off the ideal, and it's definitely good enough. What you want is about this. So in this case, like I said, you want four foot. You want the two foot that's above grade and the two foot down to the frost line. The frost line's about right here. That's the area that could get very cold. Down here stays a steady 55 degrees, so it's not as important to insulate it. And once you've got up there, it's obviously much easier to do this with two people, but you can do it. You get a piece of wood like this, and you get a hammer drill, and you drill probably just three holes is good enough. And you're gonna drill three places through the wood and right through this, through into the concrete. You'll need a long masonry bit on your hammer drill. And then you get a Tapcon screw or another type of screw that's designed for concrete. This is a hammer drill. Trying to screw or drill holes into concrete without a hammer drill is very frustrating. These are really important if that is what you're trying to do. This is a Tapcon screw. Tapcon's just a brand name, but it's probably the most popular one out there for screws. They're designed to be screwed into concrete. They're very strong, very thick threads. For a job like this, you want about a three and a half, four inch screw if you're using this three quarter inch furring strip and you're using two inch dow board. And you just drill it through in there. And that's it. Better, probably if this was my house, I'd be doing one, one piece of wood up here and another piece down here. That'll keep it nice and solid. And you do the same thing 
all around all the walls of your basement and you're good.